This lesson deals with an example using Thevenin's theorem. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in Chapter 3 starting on page 59. Consider the following example where I've got a circuit with multiple sources and some resistances and that's hooked up to a load and we're going to find the power absorbed by various loads that are hooked up here. Take a look at a 10k resistor and a 5 volt battery. Since I have a fairly complex circuit, what I could do is find its Thevenin equivalent have a fairly simple circuit to analyze with the different loads that we have hooked up. Now, since I have multiple sources, let me use superposition to find the Thevenin voltage. So let's set all the sources equal to zero but one and find the Thevenin voltage due to each source. So let's set the current source equal to zero. That's an open circuit. And now let's analyze the circuit. So here's V Thevenin due to the first source. Now, but since I've disconnected the load here, there's no current flowing either out here or coming back in again. So the drop across these resistors is going to be 0 times 3k and then 0 times 4k. So the voltage across here is the same as the voltage across here. In other words, the rise in voltage would equal the drops around the loop. This voltage would then equal to 3k times 0 plus V Thevenin prime plus 4k times 0. So this would be equal to V Thevenin prime. Since the current in here is the same as the current in here, you can use that algorithm for the voltage divider which is that the voltage across the 6K resistor is 6K over 3K plus 6K times 15. And that turns out to be 10 volts. Set the other source equal to zero, in this case the voltage source. It's gonna put a short circuit here. And then I just have one source here, the two milliamp source. Again, with nothing hooked up here, there's no current leaving, no current entering. So the voltage here, which is V7 and due to the second source, is the same as the voltage across this parallel combination. These two resistors in parallel are 2K. So the voltage V7 and double prime is the current flowing in this direction in these two parallel resistances. So it's gonna be two milliamps but with a minus sign times these two in parallel, which is 2K. So we get minus four volts. So the Thevenin and voltage then is our first result plus our second result, which is equal to six volts. Now set all the independent sources equal to zero and find the resistance looking back in. In this last case, we had set one voltage source equal to zero, and I'll set the current source equal to zero, and just grab that schematic. And what we've got then is just this is erased. So now I've got 3K in series with 2K in series with 4K. So I get 9,000 ohms for R Thevenin. Now there is a direction associated with the Thevenin voltage, and that is we measure the voltage from terminals one to two. The Thevenin voltage will have its plus sign near to terminal one and it's minus sign near or equal to terminal two. This turned out to be a negative voltage, that's okay. Just simply, this is gonna be the sign pattern for V Thevenin. Now let's hook up the different loads. So if I have a 10K load, then I could find the voltage across the load and then find the power absorbed by the load. So 10K over 10K plus 9K times six volts. And I get 3.1579 volts. Voltage cross here squared divided by the resistance is the power absorbed. That's a little bit less than one milliwatt. The thing to note here is that I had a fairly complex circuit here. I had two sources, four resistances, and I've reduced that to just one voltage source and one resistance. And then the analysis here was fairly simple since uh, we reduced this to something as a really a series combination. Now if the load changes, my equivalent circuit for the circuit S is still the same. Well, let's find the power absorbed by this load. I don't have a resistor here, so now I'm going to find the voltage times the current. So we can find the, the voltage across the Thevenin resistance. That would be this node voltage of 6 minus 5 divided by 9K. And that current flows into the 5 volt source. And so it's absorbing 555 microwatts. Now, although we're using the Thevenin equivalent circuit to find power absorbed in a load, the Thevenin equivalent circuit is not the same as the original circuit. The power generated by this source is not the same as the power generated by the two previous sources. We'll take a look at this as an example a little bit later in the chapter. All we have here is equivalence at the terminals. For different loads, we can find the results here because we're hooked up to those terminals one and two. And this is how you use Thevenin's theorem to solve a problem.